we continue our investigation of suffering and happiness. Now, Silva has said that the more we understand suffering, the more we actually will understand what is happiness. Now, let's see why that makes sense. So, we all have experienced suffering, dissatisfaction, displeasure, things that happen in our lives that we don't like. Yeah, we get upset, we get angry, we get sad. We all have had those experiences. Now, will they happen again in the future? We don't know. Well, it is not that we don't know. We actually do know that they most likely will happen again and again and again. Who in this whole world can guarantee that these unpleasant situations will never arise for the remaining part of your life? I don't think anybody can guarantee that, right? It is just a fact of life that we must see and accept. Well then, how is it possible to transcend our suffering? As the Heart Sutra claims, to transcend it, our suffering. Transcend means to go beyond. Go, leave that behind. Leave all the suffering behind. Is that possible? Isn't that contradiction? No, there is no contradiction. To transcend our suffering actually is possible. Even though the unpleasant situations that have come up in the past will continue to come up in the future for every single person. Why is there no contradiction? Well, we need some insight here. We need uh, some wisdom. What wisdom? Prajna wisdom. Let us think about this. We have touched on this in our previous talks. And you have actually gained a glimpse of that insight yourself already. You just don't know how important, how significant that insight is. Think about something that happened to you in the past probably when you were much younger and something that upset you. Let's say when you were five years old, you wanted a candy bar, but uh, your parents didn't want to give it to you. That's enough. You've had enough. So they refused to let you be satisfied with another candy bar. <clears throat> Now you were upset, you cried, you tried to gain attention, but then not successful. Yeah, something like that. Now, however, when you are older, maybe a teenager, that same situation probably no longer upset you. Yeah, okay. I cannot have that candy bar right now. Big deal. It's probably not the kind of calories that I want anyway. Now you had a different perspective. 
But then, probably something else make you upset when you were a teenager. Yeah. So these things change. Now, think about this: something that used to make you suffer, no longer make you suffer, even though it is the same situation. What does that say? What changed? The situation didn't change. What changed? You changed, right? But let us be more specific. What is it about you that changed? Well, how important that pursue, that goal, that experience is to you have changed. You used to think that something was very important when you were much younger, and as you become more mature, ah,、uh, it's no big deal. Your perspective about that situation have changed. Of course, a candy bar is not such a big deal anymore, perhaps, but something else is a big deal now. And we continue to have this big deal in our life, that if we don't get what we want, we get upset, right? But for every single one of these situation, isn't it true that if its importance in your mind changes, the suffering or how much you suffer change? Isn't that true? It is true, right? Now, many of us grow up in these kind of importance that changes happen passively. Meaning that you naturally grow out of your attachment to certain experiences, and then they get replaced by other things that you think is more important or more upsetting. How about if we take a more proactive attitude toward the things that are making me suffer right now? Which, of course, will occur in the future again. Can you do something about it? Can you perceive the same situation more clearly, with more understanding, and assess how important it is to you actually, and change? You're thinking about it. We have used the example of somebody criticizing you, yelling at you, saying unfair, untrue things to you. Somebody scolding you. Yeah. Now most of us. Get upset. It's just a habit. But then we have seen how Buddha does not get upset. Why? The situation is similar, but then how is it that somebody else is able to go through that situation without getting upset? Remember why? Well, it is because Buddha had a different perspective. Oh, somebody is saying something unpleasant to me. But Buddha was mindful, and his perspective was that oh, somebody is giving me a gift. Is this a useful gift? Is this? A useless gift. I decide. 
I cannot decide what gifts other people give me, but I can decide how important it is this gift is to me and what to do about it. Right? It does take a lot of practice. It does take mindfulness. It does mean that we need to be aware of our unhealthy habits, our habitual reactions that's not conducive to alleviating suffering. Replace those habits with the right views, the right perspective, and mentally react with the right thoughts, the right thinking. And the effect those situations have on me, the effect that criticism, that yelling, that whatever used to be unpleasant experience began to change. What used to be an unpleasant experience, what used to cause me suffering, began to shift in character. Eventually, you can see that that same situation no longer causes suffering anymore. People haven't changed. Environment haven't changed. Situation continue to arise. But you have changed. If we can remain mindful and if we can discover the right view toward that situation if we can remember the teaching from the heart sutra do you see how it is then possible to transcend that suffering even though People continue to do the things they do. People continue to act out of ignorance, anger, and greed. You have changed. And that is the key. Shifu cannot emphasize enough how important this particular insight is, how crucial it is in understanding the nature of suffering. We understand that the suffering is not necessary. It is a result of our own perception and habitual reaction to that situation. What Buddha says and what Avalokiteshvara has also discovered is that suffering is empty. What that means is that its effect on you is not absolute. The characteristics of suffering is not absolute. It is not the same for everyone. For a wise person, for somebody who has prajna wisdom, what other people call suffering can become a very useful experience for the cultivator, for the Buddhist, to gain more insight, to help that cultivator get closer to transcending our suffering. 
suffering can actually be good on your effort to eventually end our suffering for yourself. Do you see that? If suffering is a result of what other people do, what the environment, what happens in the environment, then we will never be free. But that is not true. Suffering comes from insight. And it is not about blaming yourself, no. It is about seeing the nature of suffering and that you have the power to change that. Sifu or a Buddha or Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara does not have the power to change that for you. We can only show you the way and you have to th think about it, understand it, and apply it in the way you perceive the situations in your life and to consciously change your thinking about that and replace that false habit, the unhelpful way of thinking with the right view and the right thoughts. That is how you can transcend our suffering. That is why suffering is emptiness. What about happiness? Okay, now we see a way to transcend our suffering. But what is real happiness? How do we pursue real happiness? Well, let us think about this. In the previous segments, we've pointed out several indicators of what is not real happiness. If you think that happiness is something that you can gain, possess, well, The reality of something that you can gain and process is that it is impermanent, right? It is interdependent, right? Which means that they won't last. Now you have it and later you don't. Also, you may not be guaranteed that you will process it because of interdependence. There are conditions you cannot control. And then while you pursue that, you may lose something else because things are impermanent. Are you okay with that? Right? So if you think there's something in this world that I can pursue and possess and that will make me happy, you may be in for a rude awakening. Unless you understand full well that whatever you gain, you will lose. And you may never be able to gain it the way you want it. And you gain something, you lose something. Are you okay with that? If you are okay with that, what does that say about your happiness? Do you see? Then it is not about what you actually process, obtain, or gain, is it? Because you never know when you will lose it. If you can be happy with that, 
thing is not about what you pursue per se, right? It is about having a clear understanding of the phenomena in this world. Every situation, everything, every experience is impermanent, interdependent, and lacking complete control. But those ominous sounding characteristics are actually not ominous. They, they are reality. And if you can clearly see that, you can find real happiness. What is real happiness? When you no longer suffer because of impermanence, because of gain and loss, because of things do not turn out the way you expect, when you are no longer upset, when you transcended that suffering. What does that mean? That means that at every moment, your mind in the present is able to accept reality as it is. And when your mind is not disturbed by what happens, when you have clear insight, clear perception of what is going on, when your mind is totally calm and at peace, each moment, because you have transcended all suffering, and because pursuing something actually doesn't bring you anything more. Then you are already at a place of ultimate peace. It is a peace of mind that is not disturbed by any situation. It is a peace of mind that transcends the duality of happy or unhappiness. It is a place of absolute peace. That is Nirvana. Now that is a profound insight. Let us reflect on that. So let us review what we have talked about in this segment. Transcending our suffering. How is that possible when we know that unpleasant situations may arise any time for the rest of our lives? Well, the key insight is that the suffering doesn't have to be suffering. It arises because of our particular perspective, the way we see that, and we don't like it. And our thoughts circle around that understand that, that perception, which make us suffer. So the key is that nobody makes us suffer. Situations don't make us suffer. Because one person suffers from that situation, another person doesn't. That suffering is not absolute. That's called the emptiness of suffering. And because it is empty, we can, it is possible for us to transcend that suffering, i.e. the situation 
no longer make us suffer. That's the key insight, the key of change, of transformation is within your own power. And so that involves seeing the impermanence, interdependence, and lack of complete control of all situations in life and be okay with that, accepting that and realizing that your mind in the present moment already can achieve the ultimate peace when it is not disturbed by any of it. You can do it. And it is a little bit harder to see why that is the ultimate bliss or happiness or nirvana. But it's okay. Take your time. Reflect on that. So that is our introduction to suffering and happiness. Next, we will talk about knowing yourself and that begins with the next sentence Shariputra form is emptiness form is not different from emptiness emptiness is not different from form next time let us make a dedication May the merits of our deeds reach every part of the world. Sentient beings, large and small, all attain enlightenment.